Elite Facts presents Insane Scientific Experiments That Really Happen 1. Albert Kligman was a dermatologist who used experiments on prisoners to find a way around a lack of clinical test subjects. It was in 1951 when he went to Holmesburg Prison to treat an outbreak of athlete's foot when he realized he'd hit the honeypot with hundreds of men who would take part in trials for minor cash rewards. For 20 years he ran experiments there involving perfume, deodorant, shampoo, and other things including toxins, mind-altering drugs, and even radioactive isotopes. Kligman was adamant he had done nothing wrong until his work ended in 1974. 2. Dr. Wendell Johnson carried out his experiments in an orphanage in Iowa, determined to provide a cure for stuttering. Using 22 orphans, some of which never had a stutter to begin with, he mixed them into groups with some non-stutterers and some that did. His nasty plan was to see if he could cause some children to lose their impediment and for some others to start stuttering. The process involved positive reinforcement to one group and negativity towards the speech of the other group, criticizing them constantly. By the end of the experiment, those children without stutters had become afflicted with them and those who started with them and were exposed to negativity got worse. The effects were never reversed. 3. A nutritional study for pregnant women sounds like a good thing. Giving them pills to help with anemia, they administered them to over 800 pregnant women. The catch was that the iron tablets were actually radioactive. The researchers wanted to see how much iron a pregnant woman could absorb exposing the women to over 30 times the normal radiation levels. There was also a darker side of the experiment. They wanted to test the radiation level outcome on the children later in life. Following up on the children, they found that three had later died from cancer-related illnesses, and Vanderbilt was sued for $10 million in 1998. 4. In 1954, Castle Bravo, a hydrogen bomb, was detonated as a secret test. What wasn't taken into account was the 15 megaton blast radius, making it the highest radioactive contamination ever. Residents of the nearby Marshall Islands were exposed due to the high winds carrying the toxins their way. Mass evacuations took place and studies began on the victims. Those closest to the blast had skin lesions appear almost immediately, as well as going bald. As the years passed, miscarriages and stillbirths became a common thing for the people afflicted. Those children born off and had developmental problems and thyroid cancer was rife in that group as well. The residents of the Marshall Islands remained convinced that they were used as guinea pigs for these tests. 5. Dr. Bender worked in Bellevue Hospital for over two decades starting in 1930, often experimenting with cures for schizophrenic children. The method he used was electroconvulsive therapy, which detailed shocking one group of children every day for 20 consecutive days. The children's ages ranged from 3 to 12. This continued kind of therapy led to drastic behavior changes, often with the children becoming violent or becoming zombie-like and barely able to function. 6. After World War II, the Army sent 7,000 soldiers to a medical research program to gauge the effects of chemical warfare. As a front, the soldiers were told that they were testing out new military clothing and weapons. In reality, the men were exposed to caffeine or LSD and even to nerve gas. As the experiments went on, the scientists became hungry for more brutal and extreme side effects, as the test subjects were mostly showing dizziness or slight depressive states. They wanted to create a weapon to incapacitate humans, but not to kill them at the same time. The program ended with no follow-up planned, but many of the soldiers involved complained of various diseases and psychological trauma. The Army is silent on the matter. 7. Having twins born healthy is every parent's dream, as complications can obviously arise. When a doctor was giving one of her boys a circumcision, he messed up his genitalia so badly that it had to be removed completely. Sexual identity expert Dr. John Money seized on the opportunity to carry out underhanded tactics for his own benefit by recommending that the boy be raised as a girl and to have surgery to correct this. He wanted to use the child for his own experiments. 
The boy was raised as Brenda and never fit into the female stereotypes despite being pushed into them. These concerns were raised by the parents, but he continued to push them forward with his experiments. When the truth of the matter was discovered, Brenda switched back to a male and called himself David. He even got married sometime later, but his traumatic childhood was a cloud over his life, and soon his depression led to the breakdown of the marriage. His brother later died tragically in 2002, and David committed suicide two years later, unable to cope with the loss. Dr. John Money was never prosecuted and continued to teach until his death in 2006. Eight. In September 1950, the Bay of San Francisco was subject to the worst biological attack the U.S. had ever seen. A huge cloud of serratia was sprayed into the air and allowed to creep into the city. The reason no counterattack was launched is because it was from no enemy attacking. It was the American military. The experiment was to understand if a port city could come under threat from a foreign biological attack. It makes sense to test, but to use serratia, a human pathogen, was extremely dangerous and unforgivable. The traces of the microbe were found many miles inland in small red colonies, proving it susceptible to attacks of this nature. Not long after the experiment, 11 people were admitted to the hospital with strained symptoms, with pneumonia having a sudden increase and one patient even dying from complications of the test. Afterwards, it was emerged that the test was pointless and had threatened over 100,000 lives to a deadly bacteria. 9. After World War II, the USA had a food shortage, and in order to understand how to cope with this situation, the U.S. military studied the effects of a severe, calorie-deficient diet. The participants were males who refused to go to the front line of the war for whatever reason, and for two months they were brought up to the ideal weight for the experiment. Their calorie intake was then shortened to that of what civilians then had available. It was mainly low protein but high carb food like bread, cabbage, and beans. They were also asked to walk over 30 kilometers a week, all the while going past food stores and restaurants. Many dropped out quite quickly. After some time, 25% of their body weight was lost, and they experienced severe depression and anemia. One participant was removed for believing that cannibalism was the only way to go in such a situation. 10. Syphilis treatment in the 1930s of mercury ointment was found to be toxic, and so an alternative was needed. The U.S. Health Service decided against finding a cure right away, and it said withheld treatment from African Americans who were infected with the disease. This lasted for an incredible 40 years, with these people either being given a placebo or told they had a completely different disease altogether. There were 400 people studied during that time, and only 74 were alive come the end of the experiments. There were also reported cases of the disease being contracted by participants' family members, including 20 children. Once penicillin was found to be a cure for the disease, the American researchers weren't done with their research, paying prostitutes in Guatemala to infect men who visited them. Some were given the cure, and others had it withheld from them, with 80 people dying over the course of the experiment. The research was so bad that President Obama publicly apologized to the people of Guatemala. Thanks for watching another amazing video, folks. Subscribe for more from Elite Facts.